Good morning, everyone. So we changed the title slightly because we wanted to add not only the database part, which we are going to explain, but also the everything else that you can do in modern applications using data lakes, big data, and machine learning. So in today's world, the, the old paradigm of just having a single database, a single system in which you would just try to add as much data as possible. It was row-based, and that was the only thing that you could do to maintain your system mainframes as well. It's actually not coping with the needs of customers. We, we as Amazon, ourselves, used to be based on traditional um, database technologies. And we, as we grew as a company, we started to be challenged by data volumes and by finding workloads, like the e-commerce, like machine learning, big data, that the traditional row-based databases didn't work for us. So we've seen from our customers that the need of the e-commerce, so for the e-commerce, the traditional databases, relational don't work. We find a key value and document databases much better fit. Media streaming, how to collect all the data, how to actually analyze the data and be able to get and obtain information that you can enrich with your application afterwards, social media, gaming, and, and all sorts of um, applications. And also take into account the, the response times. Many of the e-commerce, Amazon or anything else, at Christmas time, they have peaks of thousands of users that actually need to connect to the same platform and you need to scale to it. You need to be able to have a database, a system that actually allows you to connect to, to the platform without having an impact in performance. So those are many things that we see from customers and depending on the pattern of behavior, depending on what the customers want to do, we might recommend one solution versus another. Rather than telling them, eat only one database and do everything with that database, we will actually segment that by, by the patterns. Okay? So that is also bringing us that it's not only about databases. Today we need to take into account that there is a significant amount of data being created from those databases and you want to analyze it. You want to do things like forecasting, you want to do things like uh, recommendations, you want to uh, add information coming from IoT and so forth, from social media, and that's a challenge that you need to take into account as well when building those uh, modern applications. The microservices. So we are a company that will help you, and that's the main thing of today, with specific solutions that will help you driving a microservice-oriented architecture and a strategy in your company. So everything we're going to talk today is a service. You don't need to maintain it at all. You need to focus on your application. Everything is an API, everything is fully integrated, and you can actually drive more successful your, your microservice strategy in your company. And the DevOps, okay? In order to be very agile, you need to have systems that allow you to be agile. If you keep doing the old things of maintaining, patching, uh, upgrading, scaling applications, on databases and systems, then you're not going to be this agile, okay? And that's super important in every conversation we have with customers, and this is a trend why they're using uh, specific uh, managed services from AWS. So, why is that important? Because today we see that many of the things that you might be doing, if you're not using services, cloud services, managed services, and you do it yourself on pure bare metal or compute capacity, is that you're going to spend more time in maintaining the system and less time in building that application. I was in Mallorca a couple of weeks ago meeting with a company. They've been spending the last two years, for example, in building a data lake on a database, which I think is wrong. And that was because they were, they were building everything themselves. Rather than focusing on, let's build a data lake with a solution that scales, let's build a data lake with a solution that doesn't require me to do the heavy lifting, I'm going to spend most of the time on the heavy lifting and less on the business value. Guess what will happen after two years of you trying to make something work? You're at risk. The project is at risk. And that's what we want to help you guys with. 
And, and we want you to actually focus more on the business use cases from the IT perspective, focus more on delivering what the business wants on those applications, and less on the heavy lifting, less on managing the solution. And that's a super important paradigm that the cloud brings. If you're going to use the cloud just to do exactly the same you do on premises, don't do it. OK, OPEX, CAPEX, you're going to save some money, yeah? But all the agility is not about having compute capacity only, which is important for certain workloads. It's about how can I improve and shorten the time to value in those applications? How can I be more agile as an IT department? How can I meet more of the business requirements with those databases, rather than creating indexes, patching the systems, and scaling the systems? So that is something that you need to think yourself. If you have any questions, we have a booth outside to the left and we can actually answer any questions. Because that is what I said. You can actually focus on those um, applications. You can actually focus on what the business requirements of the, of the uh, companies are, and you can actually focus on the needs of the business. And, and I've seen many IT departments that have passed from a call center in which they were seeing uh, people that spend money and delay projects, business projects, to people that actually drive innovation in those companies, drive new applications, new adoption, new use cases. And that is super important for you, for you to remember. So, as I said before, you could try to feed any workloads into a single database. You could try to feed an ERP, CRM, into a transactional database. Yes, that's the right one, probably, especially if you have something like SAP Oracle, those are transactional databases beneath. But then if you try to push those transactional databases role based into analytics, then you start to struggle. You need to actually start building indexes and aggregates and many of the heavy lifting and partitions and many of the things that you don't want to do in analytics. And if you want to, for example, create a new web application, how many times have you been to an app on your mobile and you click on something and it takes forever? That's not normal. And that's probably because they're using the wrong technology. They were using something like a key value database or a document database. They would get faster performance and a better customer experience by using those applications. If you're having IoT applications that you need to actually store data, you need a stream series database. So there are many things that you will need the right tool for the right job. And put yourself in the shoes of, think yourself on how you eat your food. Sometimes you need a knife, sometimes you need a fork, spoon or chopsticks. Depending on what you are eating, you need a different tool, a different instrument to do that. So I have a, a little kid, of two he's two years old. He tries to eat his soup with a fork. He tries, he does, eventually, after two hours, okay? But it's not the right tool to do, to do the job. And that's why we are recommending that whenever you have a new workload, Whenever you have a new application, you really consider what is the right solution beneath that application. And we are here to help you. We can actually make recommendations. And the beauty of this is, again, we are not asking you to install anything. We're not asking you to maintain anything because most of those services we're going to propose are either serverless already or very managed and advanced in terms of you don't need to do much in order to maintain those services. What you need to care about is your application, the value you want to bring, and the business solution you want to put in the hands of your customers. So let me give you uh, a highlight of the different solutions, different databases, and different uh, technologies that you can use in your modern application. First, relational. If you have any projects in which you want to use Oracle, SQL, MariaDB, uh, MySQL, Postgres, and so forth and so on, you can use RDS. RDS is our relational database uh, service. It's fully managed. You don't need to manage that. We do the backups, we do the snapshots, we patch it, we can patch it, we can actually have standbys. We do everything for you that is heavy lifting and you just need to bring your application on top of uh, the RDS service and it will scale for you. Inside that, we have two major databases are called Aurora, Aurora for Postgres and MySQL, that are giving you the performance and the scalability and the features that an Oracle or an SQL Server database could have. And we have tools to migrate from Oracle SQL Server 
to Aurora and is fully compatible with the open source technologies. And giving you the performance that you require to build those enterprise-ready applications and transactional databases. And it's a service. We also have key value. So I re remember I told you about uh, Amazon. We were running on a database. We migrated that database to something called uh, DynamoDB. DynamoDB was based on the Dynamo paper. I don't know if you, re you read that paper. Was the first NoSQL um, uh, uh, white paper that we created that was created around the world, and it's based on key value. So if you have application like e-commerce, like um, uh, mobile applications and so forth, and you want a super fast performance uh, database in which you don't focus on the schema, so the schema is not defined, okay? It's schema-less, and you focus more on the application, and what you want is super fast performance, and whether you have one user or a million users connecting at a single point in time, and it will scale for you, that is DynamoDB, okay? So that is what is behind Amazon.com. That is what is behind Jatam. That is what is behind many applications you use today. Not only from Amazon, from many vendors. If, however, you are coming from the world of a document uh, store, by the way, Dynamo can do that as well. You can use Dynamo to store as well document in JSON. Or if you like how Mongo works, but you prefer to use a managed service from Amazon, we have a, a, a database called uh, DocumentDB. So DocumentDB is fully compatible with um, MongoDB. It uses all the APIs, and you can just migrate that. What we will do for you is just to make sure that we manage, scale, and optimize the system for you, and you spend less money in, man in managing um, the database, the underlying database. If you have applications in which, especially with relational, we have seen that a lot, but also in machine learning use cases, if you have applications that need a uh, millisecond response time, super fast response time, okay, we have actually a service called Elastic um, Cache. Elastic Cache is supporting Redis, um, Memcache. It's the open source technology you know, but we manage the service for you. So it's fully integrated with the RDS system. So you could actually say that you can do lazy caching in the Elastic um, uh, Cache and you can actually use that for any uh, transactional application. I've seen as well in my conversation with machine learning that some models require certain data for the model to be super fast because it's like a recommendation engine with many parameters in, a, in an e-commerce. And I've seen that there are data scientists as well caching certain values in, in Elastic Cache, so the data that is being sent to the model to the inference is actually based on the data in Elastic Cache. So anything that you require acceleration of uh, time to value in terms of response time, we've seen that in a lot of transactional systems, that is um, Elastic Cache, and we have that as a service as well. Graph databases. If, however, your use case is unique to understand relationships in between people or machines, and you want to have a very scalable but managed graph database, we have something called Neptune. Let me give you a use case. I was uh, talking to an IT department. They have the mainframe. They have different systems. They're afraid of touching certain computers because they know if they touch that computer, they don't know the impact on the relationship of that system versus the other applications. So they're building a system based on uh, Neptune in which they are going to actually load from the logs all the relationships, the graphical relationships of the different uh, IT solutions and infrastructure, so that if they didn't need to do a patching, if they didn't need to actually uh, decommission a mainframe or a cluster or a server or an application, they know immediately what is going to be impacted. And they decide whether they want to actually do it or not and the risks, because they understand the full relationship between that. Also for security of fraud, if you want to understand who is talking to who, who is actually the closer person to, into that relationship and so forth, all those use cases that are more related to, to the nodes, the connections, the, um, the, the path to that person, the network, those are very well fitted to graph uh, databases, and that's why we have something called Neptune. Time series. If you are in an IoT project, most likely you would like to store the data as it is happening 
in data series. And for that, you could, again, try it with other databases. Why, but why not to try with a database that is fully defined and architect to actually store that data efficiently? And we have something for that as well, time series databases. And last but not least, if you're looking to the world of uh, blockchain, OK, anything that needs to be uh, traceable, any application that is going to be dependent on uh, the blockchain uh, concept, we also have a ledger database available for you. So as you see, you could try to do everything with that guy, with the relational database. What I've seen is that most of the time, it might work, but it will be a very big effort to do that. And that's what we want to avoid to you guys. Because everything is in the same platform. You just choose and pick whatever solution is better for you, and the learning curve is very little. And you focus on the application. You don't focus on the database. Also, once you have all that data, you probably had, or you're probably familiar with the concept, because the conference today is about data and machine learning, the concept of the data lake. We can also help you, and we will have a schema at the end, a whiteboard to explain everything put together. You, we can also help you building data lakes in weeks rather than month of year. Remember that customer I was telling you before? They were building uh, a, da a data lake on a database, and that was the wrong decision. They've been struggling for two years, and they are now considering moving to our data lake. So we can help you building a data lake in Wix. We have a technology that takes the best practices, can capture the data from guys, all these databases, and third-party databases, and on-premises databases. So we can capture that with crawlers. We can actually build a data lake which is um, decoupled from the application layer, and we'll give you all your data in a data catalog. It will do the cleansing. It will give you the data catalog with all the um, uh, key values. It will give you uh, permissions and, and, and security rights. It will give you the power to actually store the data in the raw format. Because remember, it's decoupled. You don't need to actually put that in a Hadoop cluster, in an HDFS. That is the wrong thing if you actually build a data lake on HDFS. The right thing is to have a data lake, regardless of what you are going to use on top of. Hadoop, Spark, data warehouses, machine learning, that's the right approach. So we can also help you when building those uh, modern applications to store and capture all the data, transactional data, into the data lake. And then you apply what is the right tool for you to, to analyze the data. Whether it is uh, analytics with Hadoop, EMR, data warehousing, uh, streaming data, BI, or queries directly to the data lake, or whether you want to actually build your first project with machine learning. And we will touch on that in a second. So let me give you a few examples of um, customers using the three paradigms, the data lake, the analytics, the machine learning. So this is Capital One. Capital One is one of the major uh, financial institutions in the world. They're based in the US, but they also have offices in Europe. Uh, they fully migrated, by the way, all the um, solutions to AWS. And the number, one of the reasons why they migrated to AWS was of the database, analytics, and machine learning managed services. They didn't want to manage that anymore. So they migrated everything together with the security. So this application, for example, or any of the applications they're building, they're choosing the right tool. For this application, they're using DynamoDB. It's a mobile application. In the old days, everything was dependent of the mainframe in the company. With DynamoDB, and it could have been DocumentDB, it could have been the right solution for the right job, they're actually having very good performance in terms of response time for a mobile application, which is super important. Because we could be, and pardon what I'm going to say, lazy and try to use the same database, but if the performance is not good, sometimes it gets frustrated with some mobile applications and stop using them. And that's what no, it's not what you want to do. That's not the behavior you want to drive. What you want to drive is that people stay on your application, feel comfortable with your application, actually use you more on the application. Okay? And that's why they selected DynamoDB, because that was perfect. It was key value, response time was super fast, and I could do that very quickly and focus more on the design of the application rather than the maintenance of the database. Domino's Pizza, for every channel and from every portal that they built on top of us, they have embedded on top of that. They have got the data from all the transactions you as a customer from the transactional systems. 
and they actually built a data lake. And on top of that data lake, they're using a, an AI service. Okay, so they have embedded into the application interaction with customers a recommendation engine. But they didn't know how to do that recommendation engine, so they use an AI service called Personalize. And Personalize is based on what Amazon.com have done for many years in terms of recommendations, is using AutoML. So you could actually have your application on a database, like, for example, MySQL. You could capture the key values of those information insight from those customers, run a recommendation engine using uh, Personalize. Personalize is going to learn about your data. So the model is going to be learning about the, uh, the data, or better say, the solution is going to learn about the data and create a model based on your data. It's AutoML. And then it will create an API. So that API is now connected to the portals. And when you connect, when there is a campaign, whatever, it will actually understand who you are and make the right recommendation de depending on, on the profile. And that's a way to actually enrich as well and to have better capabilities into applications. Another example is Expedia. Expedia is doing exactly the same. Have a portal, it's running on databases, it's capturing the data, it's also storing pictures, so it's enriching with further data, uh, the information they have about hotels and what you like. And what they do with that information about what you like and the hotels and the pictures is they run a machine learning model on AWS that actually renders the right picture for you. What is the right picture to have successful in getting the hotel? What is the best picture to make a recommendation for you? So it's not only about the database. It's also about collecting that data, and it's also about how much you can enrich with third-party data that before was impossible or difficult, and now we're making that possible. Think about Netflix, guys. What is Netflix when you connect doing? What is the thumb that you're getting? It's slightly different than the one that your partner or your kids are getting. Because we are op they are optimizing the picture about the film depending on what you like to make you more attractive to actually click on that picture and therefore watch that film. So that is actually something that in any applications we can enrich as well with the right engines. Let me put that all together. So you want to build your model applications, OK? So you have your application layer. But what are the needs? What are the things that you need? Remember, we were touching different things. You might want to have an ERP. You might want to use a transactional system. Because there is another angle that I like to comment. It's also about you having the choices of what you want to use okay, in a single place. So if what we, you want to use plus the use case is better fitted to use transactional databases, which is an ERP or CRM, okay? you will go one path. However, you are starting your new e-commerce. You could try to do that with the relation database, but most likely you're going to struggle, that we did many years ago. That's why we moved to NoSQL for the e-commerce. You might have new applications. It could be a mobile application, or it could be a social media application, or security application, or fraud detection application, anything that is slightly different. And the way to store the data in a transactional database is not the best suited way to actually have the best performance to scale, which is very important because you are small, you want to scale eventually, you will need to take that into account, and you don't want to actually do that by yourself. That's why how we help you with the uh, managed databases. And those are significant different use cases. So for the first one, we can have the others, OK? So we could put um, Oracle. We could put um, SQL Server, if that's what you want to use. That's good for us as well. However, if you want to move from SQL Server or Oracle because you want an open source databases, we can also help you migrate in those, doing transformation to another open source database, but fully managed by us. So it could be MySQL, it could be uh, Postgres, and so forth and so on. And you can add, in terms of performance, especially for chopping lists, uh, cards, and things like that, uh, in-memory capabilities by using uh, elastic uh, cache. And that is fully integrated with the RDS service, and you can use it straight away. However, you have new projects, like the e-commerce, and then you can choose a different database. So you can use DynamoDB for key value and documents, OK? So anything that is a mobile application, anything that is an e-commerce, anything that is needs super fast key value, find the value, do that. Also for developers, when you have 
I didn't mention that before, but when you are defining an application, you have the dependency of the DBA, of the database administration, administrator. If you have a NoSQL database, you don't need to tell the DBA how to create the schema and how to maintain the schema because it's schemaless. It will write the values that they happen, and you will have a key value, an index that you will use as an, as an option. It could be an ID from the customer, but everything else will value in time, will change in time. And then you can be more agile as a developer to create those applications, not having dependencies on the database. Same with DocumentDB, especially if you like uh, Mongo or if you want to migrate from Mongo to DocumentDB. Uh, Neptune, if you want to have that graph experience on how to create um, or understand relationships between nodes, between personas, between machines, we can use graph databases. That's good, that would end there, but we want to help you in reaching and creating those applications with more capabilities. So what we can do for you is helping you build in that data lake, which is based on S3. So uh, for example, Netflix has a 25 petabyte data lake on us, okay? It's full independent, guys. We're not telling you even to use one of those databases. It wouldn't make sense to build a data lake on a, on a database. We ask you to actually have, or we give you capability to have a full independent uh, data lake technology. It's decoupled, so you don't need to have any compute capacity. You pay less, by the way, because of that. Uh, it have a life cycle, so we can have actually different temperature of the data, hot, warm, cold, and you will pay less. The more data you put there, the cheaper it gets. And as I said, we have crawlers. It will crawl, it will actually find and identify the values, it will actually do fuzzy matching for data cleansing, and it will help you accelerate in the time to value of a data lake. So that will give you, together with web logs, sensors from IoT, social media pictures and videos, images, it will give you a full 360 degree view of your business. That's good. I have the data, it's secure, I know what to do, but what can I do on top of um, that data? First, you can do analytics, okay? You could do, if you like the world of Hadoop, you can use EMR, okay? And there are many companies using EMR, Hadoop, Spark, the ecosystem of big data, to run modern applications, to do sophisticated analysis on top of the data lake. But the value is, guys, look at this. The data lake sits at the bottom. The analytics sit on the top. There is a full integration to have full capacity of connecting to the data, but also great performance. The moment you do your analytics on Hadoop and you are done with the job, you kill the cluster and you stop paying. So you don't need to install a full cluster to be 24 seven and pay for that. You don't need to install all the components on Hadoop because you need to, just in case, you can just spin up whatever product or service or solution inside Hadoop, like uh, Impala or Presto or Hive, whatever you want to actually launch, you will launch it with the right version. We have different versioning. So you can choose and, and only launch five nodes, 100 nodes, 10 nodes. Do the calculation, the computation in time save the results, and that can be used in your application, or have a cluster that is smaller, just serving traffic to the, to, the, to the application. The second option is, if you don't like the world of Hadoop, and I met a customer in Germany on Monday, and they don't, they are more inclined towards uh, uh, data warehouses, and, but they like the concept of, of a data lake, you can launch something which is another database called Redshift, okay? Redshift scales automatically, uh, horizontally, okay? Redshift can have the very hot data of an iceberg inside the cluster on the disk, but look at this, this is very unique. You can read directly from the data lake and only pay for the queries you execute. So you could do very sophisticated anali analytics either on Hadoop with EMR or with the data warehouse with Redshift directly into the data lake. And you don't need to pay for a humongous cluster with all that data in it. You only put the very hot data on the top of the iceberg Data is going to be recurrently being consumed on a daily basis. And eventually, when you need that query once a, a week, or once a month, or once a quarter, it will actually query the data from the data lake, and it will join the data from the hot data. Then you can serve highly sophisticated analytics, things that need to be computed very quickly, like columnar databases, not transactional databases, and embed that into your application if you want, okay? Then you can do machine learning. Again, the same 
place where you have all your 360 degree view of your business can help you running machine learning. So we have two options, and there are two strategies, guys, when running machine learning. One is data centric, which is you build a data lake, and you have a data scientist team, and then you use something called SageMaker, which is our platform for machine learning. I will describe that in a second and how it works with the applications. The second one is if you have a use case that is very well defined today and you have the set of data for that use case, like a recommendation engine, but you don't have data scientists, you can use an AI service. So you don't need to have data scientists in your team, in your company to do that. Okay? So I will touch on that in a second. So SageMaker, coming back to SageMaker, is working with TensorFlow. 84% of the TensorFlow workloads are on AWS. MXNet, Spark, ML, uh, we have different algorithms that are super fast. We can guarantee that the performance when training the model from that data lake is going to be very, very efficient. And the GPUs and CPUs are going to be never idle. The second one that is about services, and this is the, 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 the message today, why services are so important is, when you train either with Hadoop or with SageMaker, we give you a capability that is very unique in the market. It's called Spot. Spot means we can save you 90% of the cost of a training model. Because we have so much capacity. So if you take us, it's the aggregation of many of the other vendors together, multiplied by several times. Okay? Because we have so much capacity, at certain given point in time, you can decide to tell us, OK, Amazon, for this training, I want to do it at 11 at night, when no one is consuming these GPUs and CPUs. And rather than paying this amount, I want half of the price, or up to 90% of the price saving. And then that training of the model, that inside, that recommendation engine that you create, that anomaly detection, that whatever you want to do with machine learning will actually be done at a significant, slightly smaller amount of money. And it does not trivial, guys, because many of the analytics and machine learning projects don't go to production because it's too expensive. The cost of doing ML or AI is so expensive that even if the value of the use case is there, the cost is superior. It's avoiding us from going there. So that sophistication of having a platform that connects there, give you an API, because SageMaker will give you the same as the AI services, will give you an API. You can do A-B testing. We do the hyperparameter optimization for you, by the way, guys. And we will actually uh, allow you to have an API that you can have up to five uh, different models. And then you can do the A-B testing. That API can actually be connected as a recommendation engine, as inference. And you will elastically, also as SageMaker, allow you to elastically have capacity for as many people connecting to your application asking for recommendations to serve that traffic. So it's not only about the training, which is one part. It's also about the inference that we can do for you guys. And by the way, you can export that as well to the edge. So the model string on SageMaker can be exported okay, and can be compressed. And that can be run on a machine, on a car, or something like that. So how do I monetize that data? So I have my applications. I choose the right database. I enrich that with data in a data lake. And then I choose my analytics. And I choose how to enrich and enhance my model. So you can do BI with that. So we have a service called QuickSight in memory as well. So we have many companies embedded, embedding into those applications. Uh, dashboards on QuickSight, which is in memory technology as well. And you will pay maximum 30 cents for every 30 minutes that a user is, is connected. If a user is connected more than uh, $5, that's the maximum they're going to pay per month. So that's a very compelling, super fast memory technology on top of this analytics that can be embedded into the application, another engine that you could enrich the application with. We can help you doing forecasting. So we have a service, an AI service. You can create the model yourself, or you can just have the right data and do a forecasting model using something called Amazon Forecast. It will look at your data. It will cleanse the data. It will select the right features, the columns. And then we'll create a specific model for your business that is exposed as an API. And you can do a forecasting into your application. Demand forecasting, workload forecasting, financial forecasting, that could be included inside your application. 
You can do personalizations, exactly the same concept, but based on 20 years plus of experience on Amazon doing recommendation engines. So if you want to create your own model for recommendations, use SageMaker, it will make you more agile. If you don't know how to do it, use Personalize. You can start tonight. So I was in Dubai a month ago, the city of uh, a perfume company, Spanish guy from the north, actually made it work in one evening. And they're putting two people that were doing forecasting doing something else, because now they have a solution that can be embedded into the forecasting of the company and know the exact amount of uh, product that they, they need to send to the shops. So that is per, uh, forecast, but also for personalized, for recommendation like uh, Domino's Pizza. Uh, image recognition, guys. One thing that people forget is you collect data, but you can enrich the data about uh, that. Imagine you have an application with pictures, guys, and videos. Imagine you want to tag those pictures. You want to have the gender, whether it's appropriate as a content, so we can block it. You can detect whether it's a female, male, age, maybe for security because you want to recognize the face. You want to enrich, especially in media companies that are super uh, popular at the moment. We can have you and give you capabilities to enrich the metadata around pictures and videos using a service called recognition, save it back into the data lake, and you can use that to have a more richer experience of the information to actually do better recommendations in your application. Comprehend, if you want to do sentiment analysis, whether the people are happy or unhappy with the feedback they're putting, so you can use Comprehend. Uh, we have a demo, you can you know, Google that in, in YouTube, in which there is a call center, people are calling the call center, and automatically, using our uh, voice services, we are putting that voice, is being translated into different languages, okay, like in English, and then that voice is being analyzed in real time, we comprehend, and we are giving the call center operators the capacity to understand whether it's positive, negative, or neutral, also detect organizations, times, and things like that. So that could either uh, power your application in real time, like with chatbots, or enrich your view of the customers, and then you can have capabilities like uh, chatbots to actually help this, uh, and support the customers with the right uh, recommendations based on the other engines and data, or even your own employees when they don't know. There are many companies today embedding chatbots into their operation to know exactly what to do next with a customer, to share the knowledge base of people that have been in the company before. With that, you can feed back into your application and you have the perfect circle of how to build a modern application that goes beyond just a traditional database, use the right database to, uh, to scale, enrich with that data and other pieces of data a data lake, enrich that application, guys. Don't go there. If you want to really be competitive, modern, to be, bring extra value, to actually create new experiences for customers, collect all that data in a way that is not expensive and is secure, run analytics on machine learning with the right approach, either you have data scientists, you SageMaker, or the AI service, then create the, 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 the key insights and the key capabilities you want to embed into the application, and because everything is an API, it can be connected to the, to the application. Thank you. I have uh, one and a half minutes. If anyone wants to ask a question, I'm happy to. If not, we, I'll be at the booth, and then we can talk at the booth as well. Thank you, guys.